very good. Uh, number three, uh, car travels 15 meters per second. I'm pretty sure VI is 15. They want me to find A. They've given me T. And they've told me the displacement is 85 meters. Is that okay, Caitlin? I'm looking for an equation that has those in it. I think it's this one. I'm going to solve for A. Now, this is an awkward equation to get the A by itself, but it can be done. It's not as bad as all that. I would minus the VIT over. You could plug the numbers in ahead of time on this one if you really wanted to, but I'll get the A by itself. I would minus the VIT over, and I would get this. Well, it equals AT squared over 2 because... I prefer it over two than a half in front. And this is also one big fraction. The two would move to the top, and I'd have to put it in brackets because it's two times everything. So far, so good. Sorry, no? Oh, yeah? And t squared would move to the bottom. That should get you there. I hope. So D minus VIT times 2 divided by T squared. Oh, let's find out. Two bracket D85 minus VI times T divided by T squared. Is the answer 0.8? Woohoo! Here you go. You know what? We don't very often use this equation to find an acceleration. Yeah, work. Number eight was requested. Number eight, we kind of got to visualize what's going on, and I'm almost wondering now if there was something I was not happy with in number eight, but I'm trying to remember. Number eight says a child slides down a playground slide, accelerating from rest. I would probably underline the concept here, from rest, reminding myself. I think VI is zero. By the way, who asked number eight? Okay, it's going to have two parts. While you're sliding, and then while you're stopping. Okay? Traveling six meters in 4.5 seconds, because I think what I need to do first is find out how fast they were going when they hit the ground. I think first, in number eight, I need to find V final. And it's going to be V final squared equals, oh no, they gave me time. Oh, let's see what they gave me. I want to find V final. I know V initial is 0. I know D is 6. I know T is 4.5. How can I use that to find V final? Haven't I got, have I got an equation that has V, I, D, A, T, and V final in it? Well, no, not blatantly. However, I think I can use these three here to find the acceleration if I need to, I think. Very similar, strangely enough, to what I just did with Caitlin. I think I have V, T, D. I think I can use this to find the acceleration, and once I find the acceleration, I can find V final pretty easily. I'm pretty sure we just finished saying with Caitlin that the acceleration was equal to 2 D minus V, I, T, all over T squared. I think that's what we said. I'm going from memory here. Actually, that's a lie. I just re-derived. I just did the equation in my head again because I can do math in my head. Uh, 4.5. Oh, hang on. No, D is 6. 6 min times minus. Oh, this is actually even easier than that because, Mr. Duick, this we have done before. VI is 0, so this is all going to vanish. VIT is going to go away. This is just going to be simply 2 times D divided by T squared. I can do lots with this. So the acceleration that I get here is uh, 2 times 6 divided by 4.5 squared. You know what? I'm going to go 0.5926 because this is not my final answer. I'll carry a few extra sig figs, and there's a lovely 9 right there. So 0 0.5926, I'll call it that, 0 0.5926, which means 
the final when you hit the ground, and I'm running out of room here, but I think I can go V final equals V initial plus A T. V initial was zero. I think now I can go acceleration times 4.5, and I get a V final of 2.6 repeating. I'm going to go 2.667 because this is not my final answer either. 2.667 meters per second. That's what I hit the ground at. Now, we're hitting the ground. When I hit the ground, what's my final velocity when I hit the ground? What's my initial? This. Uh, what else did it tell me? The distance that my legs travel is 0.2 meters, not 27, 0.2 meters. So I think I can do some work here. Let's see. In number eight, then, I can say... V final is zero. V initial was V final at the bottom of the slide, which is V initial when I hit the ground, is going to be 2.667. Uh, A, I don't know. D equals 0.2. Yes? Uh, and now I can... Uh, oh. A equals VF squared minus VI squared all over 2D. I'm pretty sure where, yay, VF is zero. I'll get a negative acceleration, which is good because I am slowing down. I'll get zero minus 2.667 squared all divided by 2 times 0.2. Bracket zero minus, I'm going to use this value since it's stored on my calculator instead of 2.667 squared. I'll use that squared, divided by 2 times 0.2. Lay it on me, Andrew. Tell me the answer is 8.9. Is the answer 8.9? 8.4. Sorry? Oh, I put a 0.4 up there like a complete meathead. Oh, because I did the math in my head. I can fix that, I think. Let's see. By putting a 0.4 there, I've added it. Uh, is, the answer, is the answer that? Yeah? Sorry, I accidentally stuck an extra 2 in the bottom trying to do some arithmetic in my head, forgetting the... Yeah, 17.7. And I guess they dropped the negative. They were just interested in the magnitude. Okay. Almost 2 Gs. Not quite. Yeah, that's about right, I think. When you go down a slide, you have to flex your legs, and, and otherwise, if you keep your knees stiff, it hurts. I'm going to build that. I think that 20 centimeters, though, Brett, is low. From what I recall, when I hit the bottom of the slide... Because 20 centimeters is about, what, that? I think my knees bent more than that when I was a kid. I don't know. It's been a while. Emily's going, why? No, just yesterday I would... Oh, never mind. Nothing. I don't still play on playgrounds. Any other questions? I would consider that kind of a question fair game, but it's not going to be number one on a test. But towards the end, yeah, that's good thinking. I like those. And it's also... I'm going to make the assumption all of you have been on a slide. So it's, yay, applied physics that I experienced. By the way, this isn't totally accurate, because what do most slides have at the bottom? They level off to prevent this, right? They have a little jog at the end where suddenly, instead of being steep, it levels off for about a foot and a half. But, but that long, it's all it needs, right? But there are some older slides and you may see them in older playgrounds often they're big wide slides and it's a straight straight down and you better stop yourself those are great also fun to run them okay then today and you want your uh, calculators out and probably in degrees introduction to vectors uh, in physics, any quantity is either a scalar or a vector. Scalars have magnitude only. Vectors have both magnitude and... You with me? Right? Did I miss your group? Let's try that again. All right, let's continue. So... Uh, vectors have both magnitude and direction, which is, uh, we're going to be looking a lot at vectors this year. Specifically this year, we're going to start going two-dimensional, much more than we did in physics last year. Last year, most of your physics was negative is 
to the left, positive is to the right. This year we're going to have things going up at angles. Some quantities, uh, vector quantities, displacement, for example, 6.5 kilometers west. The scalar equivalent of displacement is uh, distance, 205 centimeters. Velocity is a vector, for example, 8 meters per second east. <coughs> Sorry for the sneeze online there. Speed is the scalar, 8 meters per second. Just making up examples. Acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared down. Often we would just put a negative there. Then I left a blank here, but I said my example is 22 seconds. What's the scalar I want you to put here? Time. Time does not have direction. Well, I saw this sci-fi film one time where they were moving backward. Time does not have direction. But I know moves forward, at least in physics 12. Momentum. So momentum, how about 5.1? Does anybody remember the units for momentum? Woo, you get a candy later on. Kilogram meters per second, because it was mass times velocity. Let's add a direction. I've already done a couple of compass directions. Another way that we can sometimes show a direction is to put a negative. That usually means in the opposite direction than we started. Not always. You can have a scalar that's being, that gives you a negative answer as well. All that means is you lost whatever amount you're talking about. So if you get negative energy, for example, it means you lost that much energy. It doesn't mean that the energy was going backwards somehow. Volume is a scalar. Uh, 1.6 cubic meters. Force is a vector, 12 newtons at 30 degrees south of east. 12 newtons at 30 degrees south of east. And then work or energy is a scalar, 91 joules, symbol J. Almost always this year, when I introduce a new topic or a new concept to you, one of the first things I'll give you is the units, the abbreviation, and scalar or vector. We can add scalars like normal math. For example, 6 kilograms and 8 kilograms is 14 kilograms. We can't add vectors like normal math. To add vectors, we have to add them vectorially. We often have to draw a picture. We have to dulp. That was an acronym I gave them yesterday. Jeanette Dulp stands for draw a little picture. Sorry. Watch the lesson if you're playing. Mm -hmm. How do we add vectors? There's two ways to do it. One stupid and long and one clever. The stupid and long way is this. When we, we represent vectors with arrows, one way of adding the vectors would be to carefully draw them to scale using graph paper, a ruler, and a protractor, and then carefully measure the distance between them, and that would be the answer that you got when you added them together. Ugh. I don't want to do that. Better, we could use trig. Oh, but by the way, vectors are either written in bold font, so in a textbook, you'll see a vector written in bold font, but to handwrite, Handwriting bold font, Emily doesn't show up exactly. You can try coloring it in really, whatever. So the other notation is we put an arrow above the vector. Except over the years, we've gotten very, very lazy. Years and years ago, it was that. But we've gotten so lazy now, we just kind of put a half arrow and we clue in. No, it's a vector. That's a vector. Uh, if you just want the magnitude of a vector... Believe it or not, that's symbolized by that symbol. Hey, math 12 humans, what does that symbol mean? It's actually, yeah, the absolute value in physics means who cares about the direction, lose the negative, just tell me the magnitude, which really is where absolute value comes in handy. So John travels 5 kilometers west and then 8 kilometers north. 
what is his resulting displacement? We could get out graph paper and a scale diagram. Eh, we can use trig. Let's try example one here. Oh, I should read what's inside the... almost missed the punchline. That box. It's bold, it's big, so I'm going to raise my voice. Brett says this. To add two vectors, we draw them tip to tail. How do we draw them, Mitch? Tip to tail. Thank you. You're with me now. How do we draw them, Mitch? Brett, how do we draw vectors? Add them. Connor, how do we draw vectors? Add them. Fairly sure I did this last year, too, with my students. It's very, very key. Ah, but then there's one more thing you have to remember. Once you've added them tip to tail, the answer, the resultant, is from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. Let's try example one here. So in example one, we have five kilometers west and eight kilometers north. They're talking about direction. I always draw a compass rose whenever they start talking about direction. And we're saying we want to add this. Five kilometers west plus eight kilometers north. It was west and north, wasn't it? Yes. And you'll notice, Trevor, that I've drawn it roughly to scale. I've tried to make the bigger one bigger and the smaller one smaller. And eight's almost twice as big as five, but not quite. I drew my... It, it's helpful to roughly draw these to scale. Sometimes you just won't be able to because the diagram will be too complicated. Equals... This is an equation. Now, this is a bit of a weird equation. There is a plus sign. We've done that for ages. But we're adding pictures. Well, we're adding vectors. This is vector math. Joel, how do I add two vectors together? Draw them. The tail is right. Make it okay. Sure. Because you look a little tired. You good? I don't need to bring out the Tarzan yell or anything like that. Oh, good stuff. What do I mean by draw them tip to tail? Well, there's the five. There's the tip, so I'll put the tail of the second one right there. What's the resultant from the tail of the first one to the tip of the second one? This is the vector that I'll call R for resultant. Now, there is a lovely right angle here. That's good. Remember, vectors have both magnitude and direction. First, let's find the magnitude. How can I find how big R is? This is something I think we introduced to you in grade 8. It's a theorem. It's Pythagoras. It's named after Pythagoras. He almost certainly did not discover it. For some reason, it's named after him. And if you can do Pythagoras on your calculator showing no work whatsoever, I'm totally good with that, except I've never went on a test. In our notes, we'll write it out just so that when you're studying, you know what the heck we need. So it's going to be 8 squared plus 5 squared equals R squared. 8 squared plus 5 squared square root of 89, 9.43, that's two or three sig figs. Units? Is it kilometers? Is that what it was? Now that's the magnitude, that's the scalar portion of your answer, but we also want a direction. So we're going to add an at symbol, like in your email address. What direction is this guy traveling? It's pointing in this direction here. In fact, I'm going to argue that the direction is that. It's this angle theta. We did review how to find an angle a couple of days ago. Is there a right angle in this triangle, Connor? Then I can use Sokotoa. Connor, opposite adjacent to hypotenuse, the eighth, Mr. Guile. You're both Connor G's, too. That's going to be irritating. Sorry? I agree. How about the nickel? Which trig function? Toa? Toa, sadly, is not a trig function. Toa is what you say when you kick your foot against something. You say, I stubbed my toa. Yeah, but, you know, we don't want that. Uh, tan, yes, what you do on a beach. I agree. 
What always goes next to the trig function? The angle, which I don't know. It's going to be opposite over adjacent. Katie, if you're showing work on a test, this is what you would write. I would look for this to be able to give you part marks if you got the wrong answer. If you got the right answer, I'm good with whatever you did. But I would say this. Theta equals... Math 12s. What does that stupid little negative 1 mean? Yeah, that's how you write the inverse tan. You may see some British textbooks call that the arc tan. And I've occasionally seen a calculator that calls it arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan right above it, because that's another fancy, fancy word for the inverse of the tangent, or the cosine, or the sine. But little negative 1 is easier to write. What's the angle? How big? Let me make sure I'm in degrees. I am. Inverse tan of 8 over 5. 58 degrees. Fifty-eight degrees, what of what? North of south, east of west, what of what? Well, we would say this. See how I drew this arrow here? I started out going west, and then I made the arrow go in which direction of west? This is north of west. Vectors. Example two. So that's how I can add two vectors together when they're lovely right angles. I think example two is also a lovely right angle. So I'm going to tr say, try example two on your own here really quickly. I'm going to freeze my screen. And let's see if we get the same answer. Is my screen frozen? Let's try that again. I'm going to freeze my screen. There. Now it's frozen. How do I add two vectors together, Emily? Draw them. Well, go for it. Let's try it. You'll notice, Brienne, I showed a lot less work than on the previous example. This is really what I would consider fairly bare minimum. I don't care if you can do Pythagoras in your head, great. And then I went straight. I knew I wanted to find inverse to find an angle anyway, so I said the angle is going to be the inverse of tangent, and I put opposite over adjacent right there. I didn't actually bother doing this line first. And I got 31 degrees south of east. Now there's a second possibility. For all vector questions, there's almost always two possible answers. In this question here, I drew the five, I drew the five first, and then I drew the eight. What if I'd drawn the eight north and then added the five? Or in this question here, I drew the ten first and then I drew the six. What if I'd done them the other way around? What if I'd gone like this? Six plus ten. What if I was trying to find that you'd get the same resultant of 11.7 
but in this particular triangle, your angle would be that one there. You would start out going south, and then you've gone east. It's still going to be opposite over adjacent tangent, but it's going to be opposite over adjacent of 10 over 6. 59 degrees also works, or 59 degrees also works, except this is not south of east. What's this one here? This one here is start out going south and then go east of south. Both of those, Brett, are acceptable answers. I usually draw them in the order they give them to me because I figure that's what you guys will do, and I'd like my work to look like yours whenever possible. But I'll always take both answers on a test. What do these two add to? 90. If I go back to this question, or what's 90 minus 58 in your heads, please? Jacob. Or... 32 degrees west of north. That would be uh, that angle right there, which is legitimate. It just all depends, Brett, in the order that you draw things. I take both. How many got that? Oh, yeah, excellent. If we add displacement vectors of length 3 and 2 meters, what's the maximum sum? What's the minimum sum you can get? and explain your answer. I'm going to draw a line down the middle and I'm going to go max over here, min over here. So if you have a vector of length of two vectors, one length three meters, one length two meters, what's the biggest possible vector you can get? Caitlin, convince me. Okay. You know what, For my, because this is one of those using principles of physics right to explain questions I told you about yesterday. I think the, here, I'm not going to go uh, all fancy. I'm going to draw some pictures. I would go like this. Three plus two, both in the same direction. doesn't have to be both positive. Both in the same direction equals five. Great. What's the minimum vector I could possibly get if I add vector three plus vector two? Minimum vector I can get adding these two together? Anybody? Mitch, is that a hand up? Oh, yeah. No, that was actually behind the sink waving. But that's okay. Yeah, sure. One, convince me. You're right. Oh, so if I go three plus two, you're saying if I go three right and two left, I end up with uh, one. Sure. That's a perfect explanation uh, for my ESL students. Almost no English. I wrote max and min, I guess, but you'll notice no English there. The reason I say that, often my ESL students start to leave those questions blank. I'll make you cry. You have to try. No leaving questions blank. Trend page. For the three vectors below, draw the sum 2a plus b plus 0.5c. Hmm. Nicole, how do we add two vectors together? Tip to tail. How do we multiply a vector by a constant? What is 2a? You know what it is? It's the original a, except how long is it compared to the original a? 2a is twice as long. Multiplying a vector by a constant, by a coefficient, easy. So it would look like this. That's a. There's 2a, roughly. Plus, then they want me to add B, plus 0.5C, I think that would be C, but half as long. About that-ish. How do I add three vectors together? Well, if they actually wanted me to calculate numbers... You really can't. You really want to add the first two, get an answer, and then add the third one. But have they given me any numbers on any of these vectors? Do I actually know any of the lengths? I think they just want the picture. I'm going to draw them tip to tail, tip to tail, tip to tail. I think it would look like this. 2a plus b 
plus 0.5c. I think there's my resultant in red from the tail of the first to the tip of the last vector. It's just doing the trig here would be a little awkward. So did I, will we ever be asked to add three vectors? Uh, I can think of one later on in the year, sort of, but I don't do it that way. I add the first two, get an answer, and then add in the third one. And often, two of them will cancel out quite nicely if you set it up just right. We can also do vector arithmetic with our equations. So it says this. An object is initially moving at 3 meters per second east. Did we all just turn the page? Then I'm drawing a compass. North, east, south, west. So it's initially moving at 3 meters per second east. It accelerates south at 1.5 meters per second for 4 seconds. Find the final velocity by adding Vf equals Vi plus At. Now that's the equation that we know and love. But now we're going to do it vectorially. I did this one with my physics 11s last year. I think I snuck this in. What's it going to look like? Well, you know what I'm going to do here? DALP. What did DALP stand for, Connor? Yeah, you're going to make it? Because I kind of sense you're starting to do... Was I, was, I, was I reading your body language right there, or were you with me? Oh, you were with me. I apologize, then. Uh, drawing a little picture, VI. Um, I think... Like that. Plus. What direction is my acceleration? South. How big? Well, it's going to be A times T. It's going to be A times T. It's going to be 1.5 times 4, which I think is 6, isn't it? 15 times 4 is 60 because there's 15 minutes, 15, 4 minutes in it, like 15 quarters in an hour. Is it 6? So I'm going to draw a vector south. How long is it going to be compared to this one that's 3 long? Twice. About there. That's VI plus AT. Can you see VF is going to be my resultant? Let's draw my triangle here. How do I add two vectors? Draw them tip to tail. V final this time is going to be that bad boy. So this is the first time probably that I've given you a velocity in one direction and an acceleration perpendicular to it. But I'm going to argue it's actually, Emily, exactly what we did last year. Same equation, except just doing it vectorially. Good. Solve it. Quickly, as fast as you can. Take shortcuts. Keep going. Let's kick it up a notch. 
So I got uh, 6.71 meters per second at 63 degrees south of east, or that would also be 27 degrees east of south. Example three, an airplane has an air velocity or engine velocity of 200 meters per second north. So if the air is still, that's how fast the plane's engines can push it. However, there is a wind blowing of 60 meters per second at 35 degrees south of east. If I combine those two velocities, what's the plane's ground velocity or velocity relative to the ground? Don't write this down here. Oh, I'm going to draw a compass because I've turned the page. Write that down. Uh, here's, I think, what we're talking about, though. Don't write this part down. There's my airplane pointing to the north right there. The wind is blowing south of east. The wind is blowing in this direction. So I think you would... Oh, Try that again, Mr. Duick. Where's my lasso little button there? Lasso. I think what you would see is the plane traveling kind of sideways because the wind is pushing it towards the south and towards the east, but the engines are pushing it north. On the ground, the radar would see it kind of going that way. I don't think quite at that big an angle, but get, get the idea? And I just wanted to move that around too because that's kind of cool. That's what I'm Airplane gun. DULP. Kara, what's DULP stand for? I'm going to draw a little picture. Here's, what it's, here's my hint I gave you. You want to think the engine velocity plus the wind is what gives you the ground velocity. What's the engine velocity according to this question? 200. Plus. What's the wind? Yuck. Well, Kara, what does that last little phrase right there say? Even after the 35 degrees, I want that little the letter. Yep. Yeah. Say it louder. You're right. To draw that, I go east first with a dotted line. And then I draw an arrow south of east. Does that make sense? There's the vector. How big is this angle right here, Kara? Yep, there. How long is this vector? 60. My scale is garbage because 60 is almost, well, it is three times shorter than 200. So I'm going to go like that. This is how you cheat and do kind of to scale afterward. I want to add those two vectors. How? How do I add two vectors? Draw them tip to tail. I'm going to get this. 200 plus 60. The resultant is uh, from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. That puppy there. Is that okay? Mitchell, yeah, no, yeah. Question for you. Is there a right angle in there anywhere? So there's going to be sine law, cosine law, but we've got a bit more information we can add because I still haven't figured out how that 35 degrees is going to help me. Well, if I look right here, I'm going to mark up my diagram right now. I don't want you to. In fact, I have something to let me turn this marking on and off. Kara, I think this is the angle that you said was 35. Yes? See it? See it? See it? See it? Um, if this angle here is 35, what do both of these angles here add to? Ah, 90. So if this is 35 right here, how big is this one right here? Aha! I've got a triangle, an angle in my triangle. Often for non-right angle triangles, you're going to have to extend a few lines. Sometimes you will end up with this angle being in your triangle. Yay! Most of the time, though. So you told me this was 
55 degrees. And this is my resultant R. Mitchell, you already agreed. Is there a right angle? So now quickly go, do I have a pair where I know both the angle and the number across from it anywhere? Emily, then, is this sine law? Cosine law. This is the cosine law. What's the cosine law? Well, we wrote it as c squared, but what letter do I have here? I'm going to go r squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine big R. And if you don't remember the cosine law, it is on your formula sheet. And this is where it shines. Because really now, this is reasonably plug and chuggish. Ugly plug and chuggish, but plug and chuggish. R squared is going to be, what's little a? Oh, heck, 200 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 200 times 60 cosine of 55. And I get plane's velocity is 200 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 200 times 60 times the cosine of 55. And I get it's going... 29,834. Oh, I forgot to square root. Common mistake. Because I found R squared. Square root. 173, if I round off properly, and that seems much more reasonable. 173 meters per second. Sadly, it's not the answer. That's only the magnitude. They wanted velocity. They want magnitude and what? Direction. Where's the direction? So find the resultant, where it starts, and then find the nice line right next to it. This black line here, what direction is it? Okay. So it's going to be of north. What direction of north do I have to go to get to there? east of north. So I'm going to leave a space for the actual angle itself, but I am going to write east of north because I'm oh so proud that I got that part. And I'll put a little theta right there. All right, Zay, here we go. Right angle, Zay? Nope. Do I have a pair? I do now because I now know R. So now I can use the sine law to find an angle. This is why I said you almost never have to use the cosine law to find an angle. Almost always, once you've done the cosine law, once, you've got a pair. What's the sine law going to be? Okay, it's going to be the sine of 55 divided by 172.73. I'll use this, did 172. 0.73. I'll use the non-rounded non off more accurate value. Equals mystery sine theta divided by what side goes with mystery sine theta, Katie? More specific in this case. Thank you. Katie, is this one fraction equals one fraction? I mean, I can cro yeah, cross multiply. You'll get a decimal and then shift sign. Theta is going to be the inverse sine of 60 times the sine of 55 divided by 172.73. So on my calculator, I'm going to go 60 times the sine of 55 divided by, I still have my previous answer stored on my calculator, which is 172.72596. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll take that one and be more accurate. Oh, uh-oh. I did inverse sine for some silly reason. Let's try that again. 
and I get the sine of theta is 0 0.2845501. How do I find theta? Inverse sine of this puppy. And I get, do you get 16.5 degrees? 16.5 degrees. That's what the radar would see. A plane traveling at 173 meters per second drifting 6.5 degrees east of north, even though the plane itself is pointing due north. The crosswind is moving it. You can do that question using components, which is probably how we taught you last year in Physics 11. If you do that with components, which works, it's about nine lines. I'm going to argue the cosine law. If you can master the cosine law, much, much, much cleaner. Significantly. So, next page, it says this. If you are uncomfortable with the cosine law approach, you could use components. This involves breaking every vector up into Vx and Vy. If you want to use the component method, ask me later on in class and I'll show it to you. I'm sensing most of you here were okay with the cosine law. How many of you got that okay? Yes, yeah, so I'm sensing most of you were okay with the cosine law. It's a bit of number crunching, Joe, I realize that, but it's mostly just typing. So if you want me to do the component method with you, I will fill this page out with you later on. I can also tell you're kind of starting to drool. Brandon, going to make it? Okay. You get the same answer. I prefer the tip to tail method, but you'll get full marks for either method. Use the one you like best. Turn the page. Mr. Redman, how do we add vectors together? Draw them. How do we subtract vectors? It's a trick question. We don't. We don't. That's the short answer. Instead, we add the opposite. If you want me to go a take vector a take away vector b, what I'll do instead is going that's the same as vector a plus negative vector b, where negative vector b is vector b but with the arrow on the other end. There is, Brett, an actual method to subtract vectors, and I learned it in college. And then I found this, and I went, yeah, why would I teach them a separate rule when I don't need to? We can just keep using the same rule of how do we add vectors together, tip to tail, because you can change any subtraction question into an addition question. <coughs> just add the opposite. So we're going to do that. A plane's ground velocity, or velocity relative to the ground, is 240 meters due east. This is our last example. If the wind is blowing at 80 meters per second due south, what's the plane's air velocity? Hmm. Seems to me, Nicole, for any airplane out there, the engine plus the wind gives you the ground speed or the radar speed. Air or engine velocity plus wind velocity equals ground velocity. What do they want me to find here? How would I get the air velocity by itself? Minus that over. We're going to get this. The velocity with respect to the air, that's what the engines are putting out, is equal to the velocity on the ground minus the velocity of the wind. We're subtracting vectors. No, we're not, because you know how I subtract vectors? I don't. We are going to add the opposite. That right-hand side is going to be our equation. That's going to Kara help us to dull. What is the ground velocity? What's the radar measuring? Read the question. Sean, what's the radar measuring? Direction? I better draw a compass because I've scrolled up. So if I hear you, this guy looks like this. 240. Plus. Sean, what's the wind velocity? How big? Direction? What's negative wind velocity then? Direction? Plus. 
80. That's going to give me my airspeed. That's going to tell me how much the engines are putting out against that crosswind so that on the map I'm still able to go due east. I guess this pilot is pointing his plane, I'll bet you he's pointing his plane this way so that when the wind is pushing him south, it cancels out the this way portion and he ends up going due east. How do I add these two vectors together, Sean? Go ahead, do it yourselves. I think this one will be a nice right angle. And when all said and done, that's what I got. Am I right? Brianna's nodding. You know, when you have the notes, you're pretty good. You got some game. Or, or, or uh, 72 degrees east of north would also work if you did the 80 plus the 240. So how do we subtract vectors? We don't. Have the opposite. How do we add vectors? From the tail. Turn the page. Well, Foxtrot comic. I love Foxtrot. The guy who writes it, Bill Ammond, actually was doing his physics degree in university. He has a physics degree, but also while in university, he was doodling a lot and drawing a lot of comics. And so his friends said, look, why don't you try getting these published? So he has wonderful, accurate, nerdy math in the comics. I especially love the youngest boy, Jason, who is an uber mega nerd. It's great. So, Peter, the older brother, is playing football with his younger brother. Jason, what pattern did I tell you to run? You said go 10 yards out, then 10 yards to the right. And what pattern did you run? I went 10 root 2 yards at a 45 degree angle. And are they the same thing? If you had the vectors, sure. This is football, not math class. I think I rounded two decimal places. There's the first one. The second one. Jason's now the ball. Okay, here's the play. Go 40 yards downfield, then turn left and go 20 yards. Then turn right and go 25 yards. Then turn right again and go 30 yards. Then turn right and go 30 yards. Then turn left and go 10 yards. Then turn left and go 15 yards. Then turn left and go 20 yards. Then turn left and go 50 yards and I'll hit you with the ball. Peter's doing the math. Won't I be right back where I started? I can't throw very far. Okay, here's the new play. I never get to be quarterback. A couple of years ago, we actually ran this out in the field, and you do end up right back where you started from. It's raining yucky weather right now, so we're not going to. But it actually, the math is accurate. I had to check. It says, homework, vector edition worksheet. Actually, first thing, you get out the great big review that I gave you yesterday. Jeanette, that's this bad boy here. This is due the day of the test. The ultimate kinematics review. I gave it to you at the beginning of class. Sorry? I don't know yet. I'll always tell you a week ahead of time, though. But, so you can't do every question on here yet. I told them which questions I covered. You can now, in theory, do the following ones. Uh, 
two, four, thirteen, fifteen. Seventeen, twenty, twenty-four, for now. And I'm going to take a gamble here. I'm actually going to skip lesson four and give you homework from lesson four. So where it says lesson three homework vector edition worksheet. I'm actually going to give you lesson four right now and I'm going to assign some questions from here taking the gamble that you remember some of this from last year and that'll give us so look up I just gave you lesson four this was going to be some more vectors this was going to be like the river question but I think you all did it last year and uh, I will say this where it says handy hint change in anything is always final minus initial that's worth memorizing but I'll flog that to death this is going to be your homework. So here are some questions you can try. So I haven't reviewed finding components. I'm kind of hoping you remember, but if not, I'll talk about it next class. But try number one. Number two. Three is fine. Four is fine. And 8 is fine. And I'm pretty sure you can scribble that out. The answers are attached. I think, yes, I hope I gave you the answers, didn't I? I think, yeah. So there's a few questions to try. And then I have just a practice drawing sheet for you.